I'm going to focus on how do you actually start building the foundation of the of an action plan for the GTA professional development. <coughs> so the uh, first session is on uh, principles of instructional design. It'll be given by Jackie Cheney. So I'll turn turn the floor over to Jackie. Hello. Am I microphoning? You have to hold it. You have to hold it really close. I feel very bizarre with this microphone. <laughs> Good morning. Um, uh, yeah, so this first workshop is focusing on instructional design, and there's kind of just a history of folks who have worked on this particular workshop up here on the slide. So Emily and I worked together the last time we prepped this, and in the first and second iterations of this work of this TA workshop, uh, Marilyn Staines was the one who led these, and we have just kind of stolen and tweaked her slides. So thank you to everyone. Um, the goals of this session are to introduce this idea of backward design and then to talk about how this is really just like scientific and engineering design applied to education and start using backward design to start thinking about our TA development programs very concretely, focusing on the goals. And the goal is by the end of this, the end of the next action plan uh, writing session that you have a set of goals um, for your TA development program that you can be focusing around for the next couple sessions. So this little vignette is just to, to help us think about why goals are useful. So what we see here are two uh, hypothetical students, Katie and Sophie, and it says, Katie is a freshman student enrolled in the first semester of general chemistry. She loves all aspects of chemistry, although she struggles a little with algorithmic problems. She wants to work for a pharmaceutical company and design new medications. Sophie is a freshman student enrolled in the first semester of general chemistry. She likes how chemistry helps explain everyday phenomena. She also enjoys solving problems with others in class, but she does not particularly like the lab portion of the course. She's not sure what she wants to do. So the question is, if Katie and Sophie both show up for mentoring in your office, who do you think would be easier to suggest relevant courses and other curricular activities to and why? So let's think on our own for about a minute and then we'll have you pair up in your group. So quiet thinking for one minute. Okay, within your team, um, why don't you share out and talk about which person you think would be easier to mentor and what are the reasons behind that? And you have two minutes. Are the slides in their folder already? I can put them in. Because do you think everybody can see okay? They're not in the folder yet, but I can put them okay. in. Okay. Yeah, if we put them in, then I can just tell them they're in there if they okay. want to follow along on their device. Some respects will make it easier because you can say, hey, you know, we need to do that. We have someone in the face. Thank you. 
20 more seconds. Go ahead and wrap up your conversation. Okay, let's hear some of the ideas that you guys talked about. What would be some advantages or um, challenges of advising Katie? What might be, what makes some things about Katie's situation easy to give her advice or challenging to give her advice? Go ahead. I mean, Katie has a specific goal in mind, so I feel like that makes it a lot easier to give her advice because you, know, you already know what her end point is. She's got an admi admitted weakness. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I've never been told I needed a microphone. Um, I said that I thought Katie would be a little bit easier because she already has, a, you know, an end goal in mind. So she knows where she wants to go. So you can help lead her in that direction. Awesome. And you were going to say? I was going to say that she had an admitted weakness. So if you could suggest a course that would help with that. Definitely. Any challenges of advising Katie? The challenge to me is that the weakness could potentially make it hard for her to achieve her goal. So it's like, <laughs> you, know, you know, how do you get her to move forward and challenge her weakness so she can achieve her goal? Yeah. How about uh, ideas about Sophie, challenges or strengths for mentoring her? to mentor because that was basically me so <laughs> I could connect with her on that level at least yeah other ideas thank you this is a tough room <laughs> yeah um, uh, like what I think about Sophie is if I become successful in uh, in uh, mentoring her right so I would be the happiest person in the world because <laughs> she, she is clueless, right? She, like, she, she's not sure what she wants to do yet, right? So if I can set, uh, I mean, in a particular path, and like she will thank me for life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, one more, last comment. Thank you. I was reading Sophie's profile and noticed that she says, I noticed that she says she likes how chemistry helps explain everyday phenomena. So maybe part of her problem of not liking the lab is that our lab experiments are mostly <laughs> verification type experiments. So if they could be couched in most more interesting ways so that you tie them back to everyday chemistry, maybe she would actually enjoy doing lab a lot more. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have a lot of applause for that idea in general. Uh, so I think you guys hit on a lot of the good points. So Katie, we, she knows where she wants to go, right? So we know if our mentoring is successful because we, know, we can measure how she achieved that goal. Did she get a job in a pharmaceutical company? But there's also some things nice about Sophie, right? We might recognize aspects of ourself and her. So we feel like our experiences connect if we don't, if we haven't had a job in pharmaceutical, right, we might not be sh quite so sure what advice we need to provide there. So we need to bring in outside people. Um, and, you know, we might need to think, talking to Sophie might show us different ways to think about the problem at hand, right? So Sophie's challenge might be our challenge in a different way than we thought about. So those are all important things to keep in mind, but specifically, it would be hard to know, right, if we were successful with Sophie because she hasn't told us her goal. So we don't know if she's reached her goal because the goal is not stated. Um, so one of the things that we really hope for you to achieve in this first part of the workshop is to set your goals. So when you reflect back in a year um, and share with us your progress, uh, we know if we've helped you reach those goals or not. Um, yeah, so goals um, help us to plan. 
And we need to train for goals in different ways, right? If we're trying to be the best archer, or if we're trying to finish a marathon, we need different activities to help us become good at those tasks. Um, and we start with this really broad, broad idea and narrow in more and more and more. So you guys have figured out that GTA preparation is something that you want to improve at your university, presumably since you came here to Atlanta to think about that. Uh, and we're going to start to narrow in on what that's going to mean for each of you individually. And then how are we, what, are you, what do you need to change about what's going on at your university to try to reach that path? And then actually start, what do we need to do to act out those steps? And how can we evaluate if we're being successful? So we call this an education backwards design. So it's the idea that I could start a course by saying, this is the test I want my students to be able to pass, and then design my course to help them um, achieve that test, right? And that's not often how we teach. Often we're like, I'm going to teach them introductory physics or introductory chemistry. The textbook says these are the chapters. And oh shoot, my test is tomorrow, so I better write some exam questions. Uh, but there's lots of ways in our regular, in our scientific lives where we don't think in that manner, right? So if we look at, for example, that super tiny text, but uh, Ken pointed out to Emily and I over the weekend that the ABEC um, description of engineering design talks about starting with a desired result and figuring out what we need to do to achieve that desired result. So if I'm an engineer working with a customer, they're not just like, hey, make a thing, right? They're saying, make a thing that does this. And then we know <laughs> what we're trying to work on to achieve that. So we're trying to apply that, enge that engineering design process to our teaching. All of these slides are going to be in the Google Drive for you to look at. They might already be there, Emily. Yes, no? In about two minutes, they will be there. Uh, if you can't see them or if you want a picture of one, you'll have access to all of them um, there. So with backwards design, we start with our results. Um, and in this case, that's going to be what do we want our TAs to think about teaching and to be able to do with teaching. And then we figure out what is going to be evidence that they have that we've achieved that result. And what are the learning activities that we're going to need to engage our TAs in for them to be able um, to, to give us the evidence that they have achieved those results. So in the terms of the TA development program, this is shifting from what am I going to teach them to what are they going to learn and do, and how will I know that they're learning and doing that. And thinking about our process in this way helps us to bring into alignment <coughs> our goals and assessment and activities. And that's more challenging than it might seem. Um, so here's a simple little example. So if we think about a tug of war game, our job is to try to move the flag closer to our team, right? And that's going to, um, so in order for our team to work together, we might want to know, well, did we work effectively as a team? So if we give a survey about teamwork um, to see how well do you think you guys work together, and then we train our team on how to learn to change directions, None of that's really aligning, right? So we don't need to change directions in order to move the flag towards us. We just got to pull in one direction. And our team might have thought we worked together really, really well. But if we're all feeling really weak that day, we're not going to be the best at achieving this thing. And so we're going to be frustrated if we have this misalignment between our goals, our assessment, and our activities. And it's easy to see in a simple example. But when we start to put this in the context of teaching, things get a lot more complex. Um, so let's take a couple minutes to think about this uh, example and to think about if it's aligned or misaligned. So if the goal is that our TAs will implement student-centered teaching practices and our assessment is that the students in the class report out about the amount of group work that they engaged in and the activity is that the TA professional development coordinator gives weekly lectures about teaching about student-centered practices in the TA preparation program. Do you think that those goals, our assessment and activities are aligned or misaligned? So again, we're going to uh, give you about 30 seconds to think on your own and then share at your tables for a minute and we'll report out.
15 more seconds to think alone. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and talk within your team. Thank you. So I think you can, I don't think it matters, but yeah, so I think it's a TA preparation program, so maybe it's a class or maybe it's their meeting, but, the, but that meeting, whatever it is, is going to include lectures about student-centered teaching. Okay, thank you. Uh oh, I am over time. Okay, let me give you 10 more seconds to wrap up your conversation. Do we have, oh, there's Jordan with the second mic. You're going to get your exercise today. There's a lot of pastries, so you need it. <laughs> um, all right, what are some ideas? What are some ex uh, examples of alignment or misalignment you saw between these goals, assessments, and activities? So I thought it was misaligned, personally, um, because they're describing these student-centered practices, but it's not involving the TAs to actually go through those processes or those group activities. And to get TAs to implement the student-centered teaching practices, they need to be involved in it so that they can experience it from a student perspective. Excellent. So that's one thing we definitely want to point out, especially because it's a weakness sometimes of these kinds of workshops and of the discipline-based education research community in general, that even though we talk a lot about student-centered, learner-centered things, we then also lecture a lot. And when we go to conferences, we talk at each other. Um, so if we want our TAs to be able to use student-centered practices, it's important that we engage them in practicing those things and we don't just tell them Hey, do a think pair share. Um, so, yes, thank you for pointing that out. Anything else that you think? Um, um, I don't think uh, the assessment is also perfectly aligned because it's not very clear. Like, uh, I mean, the, the statement itself is clear, but like, is that the right way to set up the assign, uh, assessment for you know, student uh, student centered teaching practices? Like, so 
I don't know what should exactly be there, but that should be kind of different. That's what I feel. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So right, these are all on the same sort of idea about student-centeredness. So on the surface, they can look very aligned, but if we actually analyze them, there might be other aspects that were my goals about using student-centered instruction that are not just like, well, we did talk to each other all of class, yes. <laughs> um, so, so one of the things we're gonna hope to introduce to you are some, diff some of a variety of, an, of assessment strategies so that you can make sure to pick the ones that are most useful to you to make sure to have, um, get the data that's really going to help you know if you're reaching your goal or not reaching your goal. Um, so probably a lot of you noticed that one of the strategies that we're using right now is think, pair, share. That's a strategy that you can use in your recitations and labs, and we'll talk more about that. Um, but as you guys pointed out, there's quite a bit of misalignment between the goals and assessment and activities here which it, it, still you're putting in a lot of time, right? You're collecting that data from your students, you're giving those lectures on the student-centered instruction, but because they're not aligned, it's gonna be frustrating. Um, and so it's important that we take this time to make sure that we're seeking alignment between all of those things. We can map the workshop, uh, the three-day workshop, onto this backwards design process. So in this first session and in the third session, um, we're going to spend some time thinking about our goals. This first session is very broad. Uh, the third session will focus more on what you want the TAs to get out of the experience. Session two is going to be all about assessment. So once you're focusing on those goals, how are we going to know if we're reaching them? And sessions three, four, five, and six are going to give you a variety of different um, activities to pick and choose from as you try to craft learning experiences that will help your TAs reach the goals that you set. Um, so we're going to try one more active learning strategy. Inside of your packet, you have these little ABCD cards. <laughs> and you can make it into something you can hold up to show an answer by folding it, right? So fold in half down the middle, and then fold in half down the middle again. And we're going to use them to answer this question about what do you hope to create by the end of this workshop? I'm going to put the question up and give you a minute to think about it. And then I'll say one, two, three, and we'll vote by holding up what we want to show. So A is a semester long course for our GTAs. B is a couple of days to, to a week-long orientation before the beginning of the semester. C is a short one or two day orientation before the beginning of the semester. D is some combination of A, B, or C. And E is other, you don't have an E, so we vote E by showing just the white inside of the paper. <laughs> So think for 30 seconds about which of those most closely aligns with your goal. <laughs> yeah, this is not a great room for using ABCD card. <laughs> this would be a better room for pull anywhere. <laughs> All right, are ready to vote? One, two, three. Huh. <laughs> so, you can, so usually when we would use these in class, we're trying to let our students remain anonymous, right? So they hold them close to themselves. But you can go ahead and look around today <laughs> to see that there's some variation, right? There's actually a lot of D and a lot of E, which I think means you're all non-committal, so hopefully <laughs> you have some more specific goals in a couple hours from now. But there are a range of goals, right? So you each are at a unique institutional institution with unique uh, constraints and affordances. You each are at a different starting point. So if your neighbor is saying, I'm going to have a one hour long, uh, semester long class that meets once a week, 
and you're like, shoot, we were just trying to make an orientation, then that's okay because we're all at different places. And so please don't try to be like judging your plan against your neighbor's plan. We really want you to focus on what is achievable for you um, right now, right? And maybe we have a lot of repeat people. I think University of Utah comes every single time. So, <laughs> so um, there's definitely, you can iterate on this in future future semesters. Um, and again, this is a tool that you can use in your um, labs and recitations, right? So sometimes we think, oh, I would love the TAs to be doing student-centered stuff, but the, we don't have projectors, so how are we going to use clickers? Um, but there's all kinds of ways that we can get around those barriers, and uh, the facilitators are happy to think through any of that with you as you go. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple little tricks to help us um, with our goal setting. And the first is this acronym for setting SMART goals. So SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Bound. So what that means is that we state exactly what we want to accomplish. And this is inside of your packet. So I think Emily came around and passed out a packet called Workshop Number One, Principles of Instructional Design. It's a little bit out of order, I'm sorry, but on page four, um, you have this acronym. There. Oh, I'm going to trip on your thing that I threw on the floor. <laughs> so smart, yes, yeah, specific, state exactly what we want to accomplish. Who is that going to involve? What is it going to evolve? Where is it going to happen? Why is this the thing that we're focusing on? Measurable, right? This gets into our assessment. How will I know that this goal is being met and the extent to which it's being met? We want you to think about stretch goals and challenging goals, but also goals that are attainable. So if you're starting completely from scratch and there's no faculty time dedicated to your TA professional development program, then maybe a weekly pedagogy seminar is not an attainable goal this iteration, right? So think about what are things that, you're, that are going to be achievable um, because early wins are really important in any kind of institutional change. Um, relevant, how is this, these goals that you're setting aligned with other short-term and long-term goals in your department? So if there are initiatives on campus, initiatives in your department, can you tie your goals to things that other uh, folks, especially in your administration, are valuing to say, hey, I'm helping you reach this goal. And, <laughs> and time bound, so this is the by when, right? So if we just say, I would like to have a TA orientation, and we don't commit to that TA orientation is going to run in August this year, or it's going to run in August next year because this year is not attainable for me, then it's much, less, it's much harder to set our time to achieving that task. So we're going to push you um, that your goals need to be measurable and they need to have timelines associated with them. All right, so we're going to jump into our first brainstorming session. And this is an activity that Marilyn says she stole from industry called the How Might We, where we focus on how might we take something we're already good at and make it even better? How might we identify something negative and get around it? How might we think about this thing that we don't like and think about what's the opposite of it and what would it look like to be doing that instead? So if you go back to the first page of your packet, page two, um, there's these little different ways of thinking about the problem as well as examples relevant to um, TA, some TA duties. So we're going to take about eight minutes to write some goals, um, starting with those goals that your team wrote during our icebreaker, and think about them from these different angles. So please uh, use, those, use those thinking ideas on page two and jot down some thoughts on your sheet as well as page three is totally blank to write on. This is pair time, so work with your pair. Uh -oh.
And so during these times, you're welcome to flag a facilitator if you're totally stuck, if you need clarification. Um, we are always trying to balance, like, are you trying to think and we're interrupting you versus are you feeling abandoned and you would like some attention? So please be visual with us. <laughs> Question. Um, we, we've written some, like, working goals. Mm -hmm. Pretty much so from the beginning of the workshop. Are we trying to connect our, what we've written down to these bolded and like write more questions or? Or just like refine them in any way that you can. So like what is an example of a goal that you guys have? So how to assess our programs meaningfully. That would be an example. So I think what you can think about is, is there anything good that's already happening around assessment in your program? Okay. Is there anything negative happening around assessment? Not every question is going to fit with everyone, but those are two. Got it. So these are examples? Yes. Okay. Yep. That yeah. So the bold there. is the kind of the ways to think, and then the not bold is examples of how to apply that. <laughs> There's like a weather condition happening right here. It's a big temperature gradient <laughs> from that side of the room. So side. bizarre. It's Florida side, Minnesota yes. side. <laughs> it works out. <laughs> Okay. So this would be a not bad time to pass out some big paper sheets. Is it one question per table? Or one per team. So I guess like four per table. Although they're sticky, how did we do this? And they don't have any room. Should we just send them back for them? It's definitely one per team. I'm just wondering where to put the papers because they're sticky. <laughs> There's window space. It'll work. The walls don't concern me. Maybe we'll just send them back to grab one at that time. Yeah, so I think again, right now. This room is non ideal. <laughs> no, but I think. How might we ramp up the good? I think, I think it works. Like, granted, this pod is likely not going to interact with that pod. Well, we're going to do a gallery walk in just a moment. Yeah. Just a moment, actually. Yeah. And we have so many teams, so that's wonderful. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> okay, we are about halfway through, so three and a half more minutes for this activity. <laughs> The problem is, is that it gets boring after like it gets bright, like you can't just bring in like something like wow, look at this one thing that would explain it. Like you can't do that every single time. But like, it was something that 
it's like, well, it's like, well, to Zoe, the, my colleague from Utah, um, Fabia, mm -hmm. I think they, I think, have similar roles. Okay. Of. She's only been in it for a year. She's doing an amazing job, so they, oh, they awesome. may want to spend some time chatting. Yeah. So just a reminder, the audio from that microphone is getting recorded. That's good. That's fine. I just wanted to remind. Are we posting all that? Where's that go? <laughs> So we probably will want to cut, I mean, I don't think we need to cut Jordan's comment, but like if I'm popping in on individual groups, we haven't really asked their permission yeah. to... Yeah, and also I think actually just the discussion, the dis these discussion times we should cut out. Okay, that, yeah. that, that's even that's better. <laughs> yeah, I can cut uh -oh. over time. Okay! Oh, microphone, Jackie. <laughs> You can also cut out my thinking to myself, Emily. <laughs> All right, so now that you hopefully have some ideas about uh, general things you're, you'd like to accomplish, we want you to spend a couple minutes doing two activities. First, kind of organize those into categories. Are there themes among the things that you'd like to accomplish? Are you trying to uh, add some knowledge to your t add some knowledge to your TAs? That's a good. Statement. <laughs> Help them develop some particular skills. Uh, suggest that they consider taking certain attitudes on, um, or other. Those are just examples, right? Those are examples of uh, categories your goals might fit into. Others might be um, time, pra more practical things, right? Like we're going to cut out time to do this sort of thing. And then, so organize those into categories, and then think about the level of difficulty of addressing each of those categories. So sharing knowledge with our TAs is easy. Getting them to actually apply that as a skill is going to be more challenging. Getting them to take that on as part of their identity is going to be more challenging. Uh, cutting out a couple hours for an orientation might be easy. Getting our department to buy into a semester-long pedagogy course might be more challenging. Um, so we're going to spend about five minutes in this activity of thinking about how do the goals that I have fit together and how difficult may each of those goals be to achieve. 
And the next step is going to be turning this general thinking into those actual SMART goals. So you don't need to follow all our rules yet, but you will in about five minutes. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> Is it separate because people are more frequently allergic to pineapple? No, I think everything is separate just because we have people allergic to gluten. But why is a pineapple on its own tray? Mm. Because it will... That's a good question, I don't know. <laughs> I, have a, I think one of my kiddos' friends is allergic to pineapple. Oh no. <laughs> mm. That's much better than the pineapple was. Mm, good. One more minute. Uh-oh. So, Jackie, yes. actually, this is for everyone, uh, presenters. So, um, right now, the audio by the people who are uh, responding to questions isn't captured. Um, so, if you could do, you're already doing this, but just like to emphasize, like, Recapping a bit what they what was said in response to your question. If you just 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 have a mind doing that, then that will at least capture some of that that content. The mic is dead. Huh? There's no battery left in the mic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because it won't even turn on. This is the I, this is how I'm interacting with technology. <laughs> 
Okay. Is there one more, Mike? There is one more. The other one's floating around here. Okay, folks, I have to shout for a moment because they're happy. Oh, here's one, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Oh, this one's very loud. Sorry. <laughs> um, Let me get this. So we're going to shift into making these goals much more concrete. Um, and so what we're going to do is spend the next 10 minutes writing goals that fit these SMART goals requirements, right? That they're specific, they're measurable, they're time bound, they're attainable, and they're relevant. Within that 10 minute period, at some point, please come visit the poster writing station back here where we have big paper and I've heard we're gonna have markers. Um, your goal is by the end of this 10 minutes to have your goals written on a big sheet and stuck on a wall or window surface around the room because we're gonna do a gallery walk um, which will hopefully help the folks on this end of the room in Florida um, visit the folks on this end of the frigid north uh, and see are there folks who ended up in another pod but are thinking about similar things as me. So we've got markers, we've got paper. Just grab one marker, please, not several, even though that would be beautiful. Um, and <laughs> take 10 minutes, write goals that meet these SMART goals requirements. After you've crafted them, transfer them onto your big sheet and stick your big sheet around the room. Make sense? Yeah. All right, thank you, go. So if, if we're looking at a specific goal, and say for instance we, we came up with, we would like to have sort of an introductory, so we want a semester course, but we want an introductory seminar at the very beginning to address the first day. So we want to get TAs in the, in the class the first day and then we'll have a concurrent they're, they're doing their labs and stuff, and we're having a course. So are we thinking about specific goal, introductory seminar, or specific goal, hey, let's get them to know what to say when they go up the first day, how to write a syllabus, um, how to respond to email? I think I think all of that, right? So, so you want to add this introductory seminar that will equip TAs with the skills to do these other sorts of things. Okay. This is, okay. So I would write all of that down. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yep. Delivering paper. I'm going to put it on the windows and then I'll just have a marker for my pod and then they can write the call up. Because I notice we are supply limited with markers. We are supply limited with markers. Yes. So what we need to find that we didn't bring but we'll figure it out is um, those sticky notes that like I thought that we could like um, ask folks if they want to in their gallery stroll to kind of sticky up other the other goals if they have any comments or questions or something yes. like that. Yes. Um, but we don't have sticky notes right now. Is it? Do you think it's okay if they just use pen or whatever to yeah. write directly on them? Okay. I'm fine with it. And then I'll go find uh, <laughs> see if we can find some sticky notes. Um, to I have some sticky pads. Big ones, but probably not enough for this many people. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe ask to bring over a bunch of hats. <laughs> 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 
because we were talking because that's one of the <laughs> benefits of this kind of stuff right um, we've got our goals but we've got we've got them written as the how might we kind of statements uh -huh. and then we've applied them to like our learning objectives how do our learning objectives for the semester TA training course uh, apply to those as well um, so, it might be what you wanted or not, yeah, we made it work. <laughs> we're, we're thinking for ourselves too. Uh, and so now we need to apply it to this. Is that yeah, so okay. now you want to frame, frame these ideas that you had as what you want to accomplish. Okay. So what is it, so, and you want to put into words like one, how are you, how yeah. How might we establish practice opportunities in order to promote a community of support and reflective practice. Yes. And so we have that, uh, how would we measure that? That's the question. That, so that would be the specific statement, right? So we, so I think you want the statement to be a little bit more specific. Like okay. what is that? So this is, this is the thing you want to do. Can you start to try to craft that into what you think that will look like in your department? Department. Okay. So is that going to be? So using what the is focus the, groups what that is we've the, got. Yeah. How are we using the focus groups to achieve that? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. It, we have time. <laughs> So we're about halfway through our 10 minute goal writing session. So hopefully your questions are starting to become statements. Both good now. Oh, excellent. Change back. grabbing a sheet of paper and starting to transfer some ideas onto that. Yeah, I'm not afraid of 
so after the gallery walk, um, they do like opportunity and barrier thinking for just a minute and then it launches into action plan one writing session. Okay. Do you want to give the introduction to that or what, what, are, what is their goal for that? Just to keep working on the just goals? Just to keep developing the goals. I think they're clearly, I don't think. Did we show them the slide? I maybe like was spaced out during your introduction this morning. I'm feeling because like in the Google folder, there's a slide called oh, about the, about the, template. The, yeah, we did not. Okay. Yeah, Do you want me to them tell them yeah. about that? Yeah. Okay. That'd be good. And they can. Uh, you know, we should we should talk with Mike and Emily because I think that we decided this year since we have the nature of the reporting is different since right. they don't have to report out to those and they could actually make something a little bit more substantive. So you don't want it to say limit two slides per team. No, not necessarily. That's what it currently. I know. Says. I know. But I, mean, <laughs> but I mean, I think that we had also thought of oh. like having them work on it, like an actual document. Okay. Um, I'm serious. I think they should write an email. <laughs> an email to their to, to their, their chair that was like, "Thank you for supporting me to attend this. Here are some ideas that I oh, came that's up a with." Really good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, Next time. <laughs> Well, no, I don't. I think we don't. I don't think that we have to. I mean, they're gonna. They're. They have lots of time. I mean, lots of time. They. They have like the whole last day, right? Yeah. They can. Um, so because what if you are like? Because that's a thing they're gonna have to do when they leave is yeah. figure out some way to communicate to the chair. Yeah. What they got out of this and yeah. what they want. So maybe want. an email. Because what we used to do is just have them do a pitch, which I think we're still planning yeah. on doing, and that's what these slides are about. Yes. And so um, then what we can also have. So I don't. Maybe we shouldn't cut that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we should also maybe think about them creating an email or an attachment that would go to an email mm -hmm. that would then be accompany that and like, hey, let's re like requesting a time to meet and so that they can actually tell them what they learned. I think it's a good idea. Oh, I think there are two per table. <laughs> okay. Well, there are enough for there to be two per table. <laughs> That doesn't mean that someone's not hoarding the resources. Oh, we are at. Yeah, we have 20 teams, we have 10 Sharpies. Okay, it is writing time. Make sure you are writing on a post it note. If you see a marker that is not being used and a sticky note that is not written on, you could go stand at it with the marker. <laughs> Marker is the limiting step. <laughs> so you don't, are we connecting with all those smart things or like we just set up the goal there? It's supposed to connect with all of these smart oh. things. Yeah. Yes. We're ready to put this up. Uh, so you can put yours back behind that table oh, as a okay. nice blank spot. <laughs> this is not happening. <laughs> what? People are not writing them because there's not enough markers. Right, and I grabbed one marker for my pod, but if we can get another one. Right That's what I tried to. <laughs> I know they have goals because I've been hearing them talk about their goals. Sheet. <laughs> Amy, why don't you grab your thing back? I sticky notes like this. Yeah, let me get yeah, you a bit. Just a small one. My laptop is. You know what? The battery's dead. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the laptop. 
It's funny because I don't know how the battery died because I put it in backwards to save it. Oh no. Well, they're, they're about ready to head into their into their first working session. Yeah. They're, they're going to gallery ready. walk for 15 minutes. You want to try Marcus again? Are, are they useless right now? Yeah. I changed the bed. And sticky notes, when do we need those? Sticky notes, I would like say. Like we would need them in one minute or? Or later. Or later. Later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we tell Sean all this? Yeah. Now it works. Oh, thank you. So you're going to tell them just to write on the... Yeah, I don't know yeah but we are. We started late and now this is going slow. But I guess if we just shorten that action time, I think it's important for them to get some feedback. The only things that are left are gallery walk, But this is supposed to be done in five minutes. <laughs> so we, do, we have real problems to solve in this session, which is very good. The oh, fact good. That we only have ten markers. <laughs> means that they, no, it's a problem that they need to get together and solve. <laughs> And it's not just sitting and complaining, but okay. Solve this problem. <laughs> Concrete problem. The, the, way that, the way that you would solve this problem is to complain to, to, complain to the organizers. Yeah, you didn't I told them, go That's stand by your sheet. It's one way, but there are other ways that they could be creative. And... I would say, you know, a stack. And most of these will go back, but I mean, there's like each, each, they come in typically pads of like 100 or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, a, 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 one for each team. Okay. So 20 pads. Okay. Okay. You know, I noticed when you, you know, I've seen these cards for a long time, and it just occurred to me while you were doing your presentation that they're not student centered. Why are they not student centered? Yeah, they're, they're instructor centered. They're instructor centered. <laughs> Right, it's the way for the instructor to see. It, it, I mean, I mean, it does make students commit to something. But I think the right. student-centered part is that the instructor knows what the students are thinking and can react to it. Perhaps. If they, re I mean, they're part of and, and student-centered. Again, the students are not cognizant and involved in the whole process. I think I disagree. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it, I, think, I think that they can be. It's a okay, way to sort of let me launch. Well, they're still writing. Yeah, so I mean, like, if you don't make them commit, isn't them committing, them being cognizant and involved in thinking? That's certainly part of it, making you commit. I'm not saying it's terrible. Yeah. I'm just saying it doesn't actually complete the process. No, 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 and right? it is misused it, it, frequently. It, it has <laughs> this one-way directional part to it. Uh, which is and actually like the peer instruction people say you shouldn't show the histogram so they don't do the send that information back but I think like making them commit otherwise many fewer of them are thinking about any question you ask them I think they're wrong I think you should show the history I usually show it because I'm just I think they should. <laughs> it helps the students realize they're not alone yes I guess the question is like if it's 95 and so some people will say if it's 95 percent correct and five percent incorrect you want the five percent to know they are alone <laughs> yes. you, do. you need to catch up on this right. So I think that's valuable, and if it's a good question, it's sort of 50-50. Yeah. And it's spread, so then you can, people can see. I don't know. Okay, it looks like many of our groups have things up, and so what we're going to launch into is called a gallery walk. And the idea is that you roam around to uh, the posters and engage with the poster. Take your pen with you. So you can write some feedback on the goals that folks have up. So feedback might be, uh, hey, you didn't put a time on when you think this is going to occur. So thinking, reflecting on our SMART goals, right, and pointing out places where uh, folks can make some improvements to get more of those uh, goals in their goals. As well as, hey, this is a challenge that I'm having, visit me at 
Wayne State University during lunch or something, right? So you also want to try to be think, uh, identifying who are teams that it would be valuable for you to have some conversations with who maybe are not in your pod. Um, so those are your two goals for this. You're going to spend about 15 minutes. So if you were to spend three minutes per poster, you'd have about time to visit five posters. Um, go team. <laughs> <laughs> we are so far behind time. <laughs> when you say how far, so far, how far are we? <laughs> this was supposed to end at 11.15 and it, like this whole session. Okay. Okay. And we are doing 15 minutes of gallery walk, but then this is just one minute. So we are okay. 17 We're minutes behind time. <laughs> Seven of those minutes came from not having enough markers, <laughs> which okay. is an embarrassing con constraint. <laughs> A little bit. Local hosts. <laughs> You're going to have 20 teams of people. You have at least 20 markers. You have the big paper. Okay, I guess we could go read some posters. We could. I could find a pen. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's it. That's the idea. So we are like 15 minutes behind, mm -hmm. but that, but the next activity was action plan that's writing. Fine. So I think that's it's easy to. Is this student centered? Hmm? Is this student centered? Yeah. <laughs> so you get discussion. These more pins. I already said that into my mic recording. I said local hosts, more pins next time. <laughs> So you like it to be preparation? I remember the education, education, something the training to sell. So Ma'am, yes. Uh, if we could take pictures of all these and upload them into the drive, that would be very helpful. Yes, we can do that when you guys are working on your next bit, yes. for sure. Excuse me. <laughs> that was a great contest. There was a lot of activity. Oh. <laughs> Somehow I thought Emily was tongue with Emily. Sorry. <laughs> So there's a request that we take pictures of these and put them in the drive. And I can I'm happy to help also. That should take no pro no time at all. Okay, perfect. <laughs> but I'll wait until everybody's done. Yeah, that's what I what I told them was when they start working on their next part we would do that. Is this your hair? Yeah, so she loved the color of it now, and I said, uh, this is like three weeks washed out. <laughs> so that's what color thing? it was. Do they dye, bleach it first? Yeah, so they bleach it as far as they can, and then they put purple or whatever color I've been wanting color to do it. some purple, like not everywhere, but like a highlight or something, but I'm always afraid ah, of the bleaching. There it is. That was the day it was done. It was so bright. <laughs> I think I saw that picture. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you look kind of 
stuff while they're trying to do it. Cause, so like this is after all of the color they've stripped out of my hair. <laughs> and of course it's a stark contrast because I dye this black. And so to have this just be like bleach blonde is a contrast to say. <laughs> Oh no, it's okay. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't put all the things that you want to put on there, right? No, no, not at all. It's too much. But I want to make sure that we all got the chance to get together. It took them four bleachings to get it to the color where it can actually be white and actually show the true color of the dye you put on it. Um, but with natural hair, you're fine, so it wouldn't take you very long. What color is your hair? My hair is just very plain, like mousy brown hair. Like, no, it was. Yours is very dark. <laughs> it was lighter than your hair, but it had no highlight, no low light. It was just all the same color. <laughs> I, I've gotten, Completely. I've gotten like, some natural highlights here with all the gray hair that I got from cancer. <laughs> 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 yeah, cancer left, left me with gray hair mm. a lot. I had like a few, but now it's like... I have it's but all, but you're, you didn't lose your hair? I, no, I didn't have to do too much. Okay. I, I was ready to just grab a, a buzzer and buzz it on my head before the chemo, but fortunately I didn't have to do too much. Good. I, I did radiation. So that, and that's just stress on your body that makes the hair? Yeah, radiation was very stressful. <laughs> I can imagine. I can develop superpowers, which is <laughs> <sighs> Okay, I should check the time. There's a, there's a weather system. <laughs> Oh, we're only halfway. Okay, we're about halfway through the time, so make sure you're visiting several posters from different institutions. Many of these goals are actually activities. Like the yeah, TA preparation. Yeah. So we could give some broad feedback yeah. before they start the action plan. Yeah, I think that the other thing is like the time bound part. Like um, it's not necessarily like but this like because again if they're framing this as an activity then they're thinking about the time bound nature of the activity. But we're really thinking about one thing things like okay if they have a goal for their TA prep program development like, are they going to, is this something they're going to be able to develop this summer and then enact in the fall? Is this something that they're going to, you know, that kind of time, that kind of time, time constraint too, we want them thinking about, right? Um, not like, not just that, you know, that this thing happens, you know, this will take, this will take half an hour during, you know, this, during this semester or something like that. Yeah. So I think, so like this one where it says recruit and train TAs. Bridging the gap between faculty and new TAs is the goal, and recruiting the mentor TAs 
is the action to reach the goal. We're giving them a great. Let's see which one are we talking about. Oh, are we talking about? Uh, F, uh, NC State. I mean, that's, I mean, that is a goal, but it's kind of an activity in the way that, you know. Yeah, so as I'm, I'm saying this, the black under is kind of a goal. Yeah. That faculty and new TAs are... An activity to, to meet that goal, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's the... It's it's hard to get out of this like way of thinking about things that like you. Um, it, it's, I think I think that there's sort of it's like okay, what's the purpose, right? Goals have purpose. Activities help you achieve, achieve the purpose. Goals that have the, you know, for that purpose. <laughs> but yeah, so the next part is is the action planning around the goals. So I think that it's a good time to give them feedback. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that works. And the other thing is that um, goals that are I think just did I do it or I, did I didn't? Did I do it or not? Did it happen or not? That's not really the kind of goals. That, those are benchmarks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to help develop them some language around that. I mean, to help push them in, in their pods. But they don't report out in the pod until the end of the day, right? I think that we can, at liberty, with our, in our, in our, uh, in our individual pods with our individual facilitators, sort of say, hey, you know, we've got ten more minutes in this period. Let's let's have a chat or something like that. Yeah. But even individually, just kind of going around and helping them. Yeah. So, I mean, we can wrap this up whenever and launch them into the next, but they are still like talking to each other. So maybe what we can do is uh, uh, maybe give them a three minute warning or something and then we can sort of, I mean, they don't have to stop doing what they're doing when they start their action plan development because it's kind of related to this. So I think we have one more slide of information. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, and then we were going to show them, we want to show them the goal, that, that template for the first. Do we, do we want to, we still want them to use the, um, the PowerPoint or the slide template? They can, they're available. Okay, I think it's good. So I have it here. I can. I'll take pictures of the of each of the posters to put them in the drive as well. Okay. But I need them to be more not there. Uh oh! Now I lost my time. Okay, folks, finish up with the poster you are visiting and head back to your pod. We have one more slide for you, and then um, we'll let you engage with some of the feedback that got written on your poster. We're also going to try to go around and take pictures of the posters so that we can post them so you can see all the ideas and all the feedback. So some broad feedback that some of the facilitators uh, wanted to provide was that 
We think that actually the SMART goals acronym pushes you a little bit to think about activities instead of the goal that you're trying to achieve with that activity. So make sure as you're um, working with your team in the next half hour to 45 minutes before lunch, thinking about these are the goals that we're going to be that we're going to be focusing on, that they have a purpose. So I think we were thinking goals have a purpose and activities help you achieve the purpose. Um, so an example might be um, if your goal says recruit and train TAs, um, that same poster says right under it to bridge the gap between faculty and new TAs, right? So I think the goal is that faculty and new TAs um, see some kind of camaraderie, some kind of teamship um, between them. A, why is that important to you? And then this is a great activity to achieve that goal. Um, so make sure that you're um, separating the goals and the activities that are helping you achieve the goals. And I do think some of the blame is on the SMART goals acronym for pushing you towards activities. Um, and the one last thing that we want you to think about are that there are these influences on your ability to achieve goals. So we might have the same goals at, um, between two different teams and different constraints and affordances might make those goals easier or more challenging for one team than another. Um, so uh, leveraging the opportunities that, you, that are in your own department are gonna be really important. And I realized this when I was chatting with the San Jose State team actually a couple weeks ago when I was visiting them, um, that when we did our TA redevelopment, we took advantage of a lot of different opportunities. So things like changes in curriculum are good times to make other kinds of changes too, right? We can say, hey, this AAPT report came out that said the lab shouldn't just be confirming what's happening in the lecture, they should be teaching the students process skills. And hey, that means our GTAs need to know how to guide the students in enacting process skills. So realizing those places where, even though it means you're gonna be taking on a lot of change at once, that might be the time to collaborate with that person who's been entrenched in doing the same thing for 20 years to say, hey, this one opportunity means this is the time to take on this other opportunity also. Um, and then constraints are gonna be things like buy-in from your colleagues and the TAs. If something's been running really smoothly for a long time and not causing your department chair headaches, change can be difficult. Uh, getting the department chair to give you the time that it actually takes to do these things can be difficult. Um, and that gets into money and personnel as well. Um, so make sure that you're identifying these and thinking about maybe how can I leverage some of the opportunities to overcome those things that I see as constraints. Um, so for our last 45 minutes before um, lunch, which is still gonna stay right on time at 12.15, we want you to continue engaging in this cycle with your team um, of thinking about goals, making sure that they are goals with a purpose, and then identifying the constraints and opportunities for those goals. You can also talk with the other folks at your pod. Um, and we wanted to show you one of the spaces that you have for thinking this through if you um, would like to make use of it. So in the um, Google Drive folder, that is the four 2019 workshop participants, you each have a team workspace you can think about if you're a physicist or a chemist and choose there and then find your university and choose that. And um, we have in there a, a Google Slides presentation with some things to be thinking about. So your goals is what we're up to right now and your assessment plan will be after lunch. Um, so we are gonna want you to be reporting out within your pod at the end of today. So some kind of visual will be useful and um, that's one of the places you have to do that. Was there more you wanted to say about that, yeah. Jordan? Um, just to remind everybody that you know tomorrow you'll have lots of opportunities to think about and get specific about activities that speak to the goals and the assessments. So we still really want you to, I mean, we're being very deliberate this today, this first day, to have you really reflect on and think about goals. And goals aren't, uh, we're not looking for things that are, did this happen or didn't it happen? That's more like a benchmark. It's really about what is it that you want to accomplish? What's the purpose? And as, as Jackie said, 
And then we will have plenty of opportunity tomorrow. You don't have to worry about the activities part of it yet. Okay, I mean, that's gonna be in your back, in the back of your mind. It's gonna be really hard not to sort of put that up front because that's the way we typically do it. But we really want you to take today to really think more about the goals, the broader goals, the purpose of those things, what are the big things you want to accomplish. And then uh, in after lunch, we'll do how you would then assess those goals. And then tomorrow, we'll, you'll have plenty of opportunity to really think about and write down specifically what are the activities that speak to that, okay? So I think an activity that we can adopt from toddlers to help us with this is to, but why, but why, but why ourselves until we can't go any deeper, right? So why do we want to recruit mentor TAs? Because we want the TAs and the faculty to get to know each other. Why do we want the TAs and the faculty to get to know each other? Um, but why yourself all the way down to um, something that you can't, you can't but why anymore. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, yeah, we're gonna break for lunch at 12.15. There are a couple spaces if it gets too noisy out here. We do, can open the doors to out there. So if you're frozen where you're sitting, I think we think we're welcome to sit outside. Um, <laughs> there are also some chairs in the atriums out here, um, or you can stick at your own table. Um, yep. Emily. Mike? The pictures are ready. I'm gonna upload them. Okay, and the pictures have been taken, so if you want to take your sheet down so that you can look at the feedback that you got, you're welcome to do that. And Emily's gonna stick them in the workshop uh, drive folder so that you can look through all of them. Okay. Questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good idea, thank you. So next time you may, we make posters, uh, please put your name so that we can find you if you want to chat. I labeled them by university. Anything so, else? Okay. <laughs> yes, but it goes off.